insulin versus glucagon function. By the end of this video, you're going to have a much better understanding of how the body responds to being in a fed state as opposed to a fasted state when it comes to these two hormones. Hit the subscribe button to improve your fitness, health, and nutrition. Okay, let's get right on topic. Let's talk about the inverse relationship between the hormone insulin and glucagon and how it affects the metabolism when it comes to weight loss and improving your health. Okay, first of all, what is insulin? Look at insulin as being the storage hormone, just simply like that. Whenever you're eating food, all the calories you're not burning, the excess calories are going to be stored away with the aid of insulin. The pancreas produces insulin to control the glucose, to control your blood sugar. Like the body doesn't like more than about five grams, one teaspoon of sugar running through the blood at any one time. So when the sugar gets high in the bloodstream, the pancreas produces insulin to help store away these excess carbohydrates, excess sugars in the muscles and in the liver in the form of glycogen. Okay, now insulin does other things as well. It helps protein synthesis. It helps store away fats, you know, as well as well as carbohydrates. It stimulates mTOR, which is like growth signaling. You know, this is pretty much what happens when you're in a fed state. When you're eating food, just think it's insulin is high, and it's high to store away the excess calories you're not burning right then. Okay, now what's the inverse of insulin? The exact opposite hormone is glucagon. Okay, now the pancreas will produce glucagon to actually increase glucose within the bloodstream. So when the sugar in the blood gets kind of low, the pancreas produces this glucagon to help release stored energy. Some people even call it the fat burning hormone, meaning that, you know, glucagon will help release fat from the fat cells to potentially be burned up. Now the body is always battling between the ratio between insulin and glucagon. Just think like when you're not eating, when you say you're in a fasted state, so you slept all night, you fasted, you wake up in the morning, glucagon is probably higher controlling your blood sugar and insulin is low. But when you eat something, especially when you eat say a lot of carbohydrates, they had a big bowl of pasta, some Italian bread, you know, a lot of carbs, you know, there's a lot of sugar running through your bloodstream. Insulin gets really high to take that sugar out of the bloodstream and to store it away. Okay, so now you have this guy basic understanding. So just think, what would be the op the optimal scenario to actually lose weight? That would be high glucagon and low insulin. And how do you do this? First, all you can do it through just not eating, through fasting. When you're in a, like you said, if you're in a fasted state, glucagon is high, insulin is low. Great way to lose weight, right? But there is there is a, a way of eating, you know, a diet that I think is somewhat optimal for minimizing how high your insulin goes, minimizing, minimizing that and actually increasing glucagon. And that would be like a low carbohydrate type diet. Not, not, not good for everyone. Everyone's body is different. But my opinion is for most people to control your weight, to lose weight, to have good, a good healthy metabolism, just to have good health, a moderate to low carbohydrate diet, in my opinion, is the way to go. Okay, so like, like what would be a good macronutrient ratio for someone to um, follow to keep insulin levels under control and to increase their glucagon so they can burn fat and burn up these excess carbohydrates. I, I, you know, I would say a, a higher healthy fat type diet, for example, maybe 60% of your calories coming from healthy fats. When I mean healthy fats, like monounsaturated fats, you know, like avocados, you know, the, the fats found in like wild salmon, like wild oily type fish, even pasture-raised eggs, even though there is saturated fat, but saturated fat's good for the body too in a natural form like that in whole eggs. You know, macadamia nuts. I wouldn't chase after fat by like, you know, buttering things like excessively. Just eat whole natural foods that are just naturally high in fat and it, the, the ratios will just fall into place. Then you want to actually definitely want to limit your carbohydrates I don't know, maybe about 20% of your calories, 20 to 15% of your calories. You want, you know, like fibrous type of plants and vegetables to be most of your carbohydrates. You know, you want to avoid actually those high glycemic, those sugary type carbs that release the, into the bloodstream quickly. And then you want to have an adequate amount of protein. You know, my protein recommendation is somewhere maybe 
one gram of protein per kilogram body weight, maybe a little bit more. Obviously, if, you, if, you're, if you're doing a lot of exercising and you're extremely active, I kind of like that ratio, 60% fat, maybe 20, 25% protein, maybe 15 to 20% um, carbohydrates. I think it's an optimal diet to get these, the insulin glucagon ratio optimal. It's going to help you lose weight and gonna help you improve your health. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's just a basic explanation of these two hormones. If I have, have any more questions, let me know. Like once again, you know, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I've been a fitness trainer, gym owner for 30 years, but I really enjoy studying these topics. I read studies about this stuff pretty much every single day. If I can help you with any of this in any way, you know, leave a comment. I get back to you as soon as I can and actually subscribe to my channel. I put out videos like this every single week. Take care, everyone, and have a wonderful day.